a porno slasher got my attention. Man, I have absolutely no idea how to review this film. Need myself a little liquid courage. Yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome to day 30 here on the 31 Days of Horror. I am your host, Moon616, and thank you once again for stopping in, guys. Yeah, day 30 is here, and I've got a really, really interesting one for y'all tonight. Uh, this one is courtesy of After Hours Cinema, uh, directed by Sean Costello, who is mostly known for directing hardcore pornographic films. Uh, mixed with kind of genre films, he likes to do, you know straight up pornos, uh, porno mixed with comedies, or comedy pornos, um, action pornos, drama pornos, he's really kind of interesting, he made like real porno films. And this one is really no different, this is where he dipped into the uh, the horror genre, I believe this is one of his very first films, I know this one was very controversial when it first came out in 1973, and it of course is entitled Forced Entry, yes. Yeah, like I said, this one is a uh, film for, you know, adults only, because um, it is a hardcore porno mixed with slasher elements. Um, but getting into the plot of this one, it basically follows your main character, who is, I think he's actually unnamed in the film. He is a Vietnam veteran who is now back in America working in New York City as a uh, gas jockey. He's working at a gas station. Um, and he's a complete slime bag, uh, partially in due to the fact that he's kind of lost touch with reality uh, in itself. Um, he just has crazy flashbacks to Nam, and he's just having a hard time, you know, living in the real world, you know, because of course he was trained to kill. And now that he's back in reality, he's just having a hard time kind of fathoming the difference between Vietnam and the real world. So what he starts doing is he starts ripping off people or some hot women's uh, addresses from their credit cards when they pay for gas. Then he goes and seeks them out at their homes, and then he rapes and kills them. And that is, you know, the plot of the film. <laughs> yeah, now my thoughts on this one. Now, this is a really low budget film, quite obviously. Uh, I think it cost about 6200 bucks to make, shot on 60 millimeter film. And I really do like the look of the film. It's gritty, it's grimy, you know. It's got some shots of, you know, of early 70s New York, which is really gritty and grimy. Um, really fantastic. I wish they had have actually done more in the way of narrative to this film because it's really, it's really kind of the same scenes over and over again. You know, kind of what you would expect from a porno slasher film. Uh, yeah, it's just basically the same thing, you know, him at a gas station, um, getting the address, seeking them out, you know, having sex or raping them and killing them. And it just kind of repeats itself throughout the film. And I think there's four or five, you know, hardcore sex scenes in the film. Uh, so there isn't really much in the way of a narrative in this one. But, you know, this one right here is, uh, it's definitely made for shock value. I mean, for 1973 to make a film that's really kind of this gritty and hardcore. And I mean that in both ways. Obviously, it is hardcore porno. But I mean, in content too with the, the rape and killings. Like, he's breaking into these women's houses, which hence forced entry. Uh, which is kind of a double meaning really he's <laughs> breaking into the home he's raping them and killing them and you know the killings and the effects and stuff aren't the greatest in the film of course they're super low budget and stuff but it's just the shock value of what you're watching because you know it's really hard to get enjoyment out of a film like this because you're watching rape and then murder and it's not in the comedy context at all this is actually meant to be very serious and uh, so there's a lot of shock value there um, you know, and there's really not a whole lot to say about this film. I mean, there's a there's somewhat acting in this film. It's really bad, really bad dialogue and stuff. It kind of plays out like your typical porno film, um, which is kind of a shame because I would like, love to have seen a little more narrative in this, you know, just a little more story. But I did like the fact with the main character that, you know, the Sean Costello put in all these real clips of Nam and, and those are the flashbacks that he's having throughout the film and you know and it's just it's really gritty how it's done too you know as he's you know forcing his women to perform sexual acts or he's raping them and stuff he's having these flashbacks and he's just like he's calling them all sorts of you know you know names like gooks and stuff like that um and just really repugnant shit that he's spitting out of his mouth it's really it's really nasty and stuff uh, so you get a lot of this, it's just gritty. This film right here is not for everybody at all, especially if you're under 18. 
Uh, don't be checking this one out. So, um, but, uh, you know, I can see how this one is still kind of shocking people all these years later because of its content. It's really nasty. You know, people talk about, you know, I spit her in a grave and all these other type rape films and, you know, those are rape revenge films. But this one is like just rape and murder. You know, it, it's really kind of nasty. Uh, probably one of the grittiest type films I've ever seen. Um, you know, you know, just, you know, the content, but the look of the film is just crazy, man. It's really crazy. It's not very, it's not even shot that well, which is kind of disappointing. You know, a lot of the scenes are, you know, you want to, you know, they're porno scenes, you know, porno is just shot a lot better nowadays, I think, but, uh, um, just not shot that great, but you can tell that Sean Costello definitely did a lot of guerrilla uh, filming, you know, when he was out in the streets of New York, he was definitely guerrilla shooting. Um, which is kind of cool. I love seeing guerrilla filming in, in these type of low budget films, man. It just, it really makes my day because the shit that you're seeing is just, it is what it is, right? Pretty cool stuff. But, uh, you know, the girls are pretty sexy in this. It's seventies. So you have those seventies, huge muffs <laughs> that's going on and stuff. So, um, but really overall, not really a lot to say about this one. This is a really hard film to rate because it's not a very well made film. It has a lot of shock value, and I do kind of recommend, you know, for the hardcore fans of maybe putting this in your collection. I mean, it's something I will never probably go back to too many times. I, I might show a couple friends this just to, you know, just for the shock value of it. Um, it's definitely an interesting piece because, you know, people are still talking about this film all these years later, um, which is pretty cool. So, but, uh, you know, hard one to, to, to review because... You know, I'm not a fan of rape and kill. I mean, I've stated many times I do like rape revenge films because I love revenge films. But this one's just rape and kill. It's really tough to kind of rate and stuff. Um, you know, as a whole, I, it wasn't really overly that entertaining, to be honest. Um, but it was decent. It, it was actually pretty decent for the shock value and stuff. So I'm going to give this one roughly a 4.5 out of 10. Um, you know just for certain elements. I like to grill the shooting and stuff and the look of it, 60 millimeter, pretty gritty, but forced entry, definitely one to have in the collection anyways. In my, in my opinion, if you can seek this one out, maybe give it a shot. But like I said, it's not for everybody. It's hardcore porno. Um, and uh, yeah, it is what it is. So that's gonna do it for day 30 here on the 31 days of horror. Um, see you guys tomorrow. Day 31, of course, we all know what that means. Halloween, so yeah. Check you guys tomorrow, and peace out.